All right, what's up, guys? I'm back, and as you can see by the title and this dope shirt I got, we're going to be talking about Cuba, a very, very overdue video. I went to Cuba in the beginning of September, and it is now December. So, basically, I'm just going to give you the rundown. I was there stuck during Hurricane Irma, and it was quite an experience. Um, so, I'm going to give you all the tips, tricks, all everything I could think of. If you're thinking about going to Cuba and a little bit of my experience because it was very different from my normal travels and if you did not watch my Puerto Rico video already watch that because I went to Puerto Rico and flew from there stopped in Fort Lauderdale and then went straight to Cuba so it was pretty interesting so just a heads up guys something you want to know is that Cuba is a very dry heat I got off that airplane and it was so embarrassing because I almost passed out. So I got pretty lucky. As soon as I walked outside the airport, I met a couple and they were, had no idea where they were going and they agreed to split the cab. It's about 25 cook, equivalent to 25 US dollars. Um, and that is going from the airport to Havana. So I was pretty lucky, got to split it with them. They're really nice. Something I like to do is just walk around, get a feel for the area that I'm in. And that's what I did. I walked down the Malacom, which is about two blocks from my hostel. And uh, I think I went straight to the National Hotel, which was really, really beautiful, but too touristy for me. feel like I'm in the Sahara Desert. It was just dry heat. I almost died at the airport. These people gave me water and cookies, which is really nice. But hello, like I literally almost passed out. So I'm at the National Hotel of Cuba and it's actually so beautiful. Well. So later on that day, I went back to my hostel and I met a really awesome guy named Philip. Philip from Berlin. What's up? Uh, we spent the day uh, going to the beach. I think it was the same day. It may have been the next day. Uh, but he took me to the beach. We walked downtown, looked around a bit. It was really nice, really relaxing. The main downtown part of Havana is so pretty. and. Um, really nice to walk around. It's very touristy. There's gonna be people coming up to you like crazy. Um, I met so many locals. They were really nice. And of course, I had to stop at La Bodeguita del Medio, the famous place where apparently the mojito was born. Of course, another tourist trap. <laughs> so I got my mojito. Now let's get a daiquiri. Let's just say I did not end up with that daiquiri. Instead, I met a local, really nice lady, but she somehow convinced me to get myself and her a mojito. And instead, kind of bought this lady one somehow. I don't know, my Spanish is not good. So somehow I ended up with another local. <laughs> Havana was awesome, but I was ready to get out and explore a little bit more. 
hopped in a collectivo that I ordered from my hostel and I was on my way. Flavor, you replanted so many quantity tobacco plants direct in the sun. This leaf in the sun is so many dry and have good aromas, good flavor only for inside cigar. Vinales was so nice and relaxing. It was, had a small homey feel, and I seen the Casa Particular there. It was really great. <laughs> I got the chance to see this huge mural that was painted on the mountains. It was epic and I was so excited because I had wanted to go there for the longest. As the hurricane moved in closer to Cuba, I knew that my time in Vinales would be shorter. So I left after only one night and headed back to Havana because I knew there would be a lot more there just in case if I got caught in the hurricane for too long. But of course, there had to be a couple little stops on the way. So, we are in La Mata. <laughs> hmm? We are in La that that was the first part this is gonna be three parts wow three um so if you want to check out part two what happens with the hurricane and getting back to havana check it out